what's up my name is technoba here for troubleshoot and welcome back to another video in this video i'll show you how to use less sass scss stylus jsx coffee script and handlebars inside of visual studio well let's say properly usually whenever you add these other languages into your project such as i have here in my palazzo project you can of course utilize say scss to its full potential and of course you'll have scss files however as you're probably accustomed to, you usually have to build these files into normal CSS files in order to actually use them, such as site.scss, which gets compiled into site.css. But usually you'll have to do this manually, or it just becomes an issue to use it inside of Visual Studio. But there is a plugin out there that automatically compiles SCSS, less, SAS, stylus, JSX, etc. into other files that you can use in Visual Studio in your projects, such as I have here. I specifically only work in SCSS and it's compiled automatically into CSS whenever I build my project. And that's exactly what I'll be showing you in this video here. What I'll really be showing you in this video is how to use Web Compiler. This is the plugin that I'm talking about. You can right click less SCSS style JSX ES6 or coffee files in a solution to set up automatic compilation. And compiler config.json is created in the root of the project that lets you modify the behavior of the compiler. You can compile on save and compile on build or compile all manually. It's really, really useful. So let's get right into this. In order to begin, you'll need to install the plugin or plugins that I mentioned. So head across to extensions and manage extensions. Then online, and we'll simply be searching for web compiler and downloading and installing this here. You'll know it's the right one when it has a metric ton of installs. Then after the web compiler is installed, close out of this window and restart all of your Visual Studio clients that you have open, making sure it's closed completely. When you do so, you'll see this on your screen. Follow through with the modify step here. It'll close Visual Studio if it's left open and install the plugins. Closing it and restarting Visual Studio, you'll see that not much has changed. I still have these SCSS files here and they haven't been built into CSS files. So in order to do so, right click these files here, hover over web compiler, and you can see it's already added to the compilation setting here. If it's not, you'll need to click add to compilation or something like that. I'll remove it for now, right click web compiler and compile file. Now you can see it's automatically generated a CSS file, but also if we right click it, as soon as it finishes processing, we can head back to web compiler and you can see it says recompile file or remove from compilation. Awesome. So you can see we have SCSS, CSS and min.css, which means it compiles not only into CSS, but also into a compressed CSS file. Really nice and useful. And you can see in the bottom right that it has a generated watermark here, just letting us know that this was generated, which is useful if you ever search a project and you end up in one of those files by accident. So if we simply add to this here, I'll just say dot test and set background to say black, save this file. You'll see that if I open modal.css down here, we have test and modal min.css, we have test here and remove it. And of course, as you expect, it disappears from both of the CSS files here. So the project is working properly. Every time I save, it's updating. Every time I'm building, it should also be updating, etc., etc. But let's say you don't really want these min.css files. What can you do? Well, in order to customize it, we need to look inside of compilerconfig.json, which is a newly created file down here. Or if it doesn't exist, you'll need to create one in the root of your project, being compilerconfig.json. Inside of here, it's a simple JSON file where we have output files and input files. The extensions page does go through a couple of steps, though I'm not too sure why it's only on one line here. You basically set an output file and an input file, which will go ahead and compile whatever and whenever you save it, etc. If you'd like to disable minification, you can add another comma here and on a new line, say minify, enabled true or enabled false, which is what I'll be having. On top of this, you have a couple of other options, including project and options source map in order to generate a source map file for it. If I say true to that, true to the minify, and true to include in project. Now that we've saved this file, site.css should be minified and build a source map too. So site.css, we have site.css, CSS, and min.css, 
And if we ask it to recompile the file, it should have created a map file, though it seems to have avoided it. Well, that's okay. For now, I won't be including a source map. I won't be including it in project here necessarily, but I will be disabling the minify option here and I'll be placing this in each of these options for my other files. There's a couple of new files, including contextmenu.scss, and the easiest way to include this is just right click, web compiler, compile. After clicking yes, you can see it's updated, but I forgot to save this. So I'll disable minification and apply it again to all of these other files here. There we go. Now, context menu should be built as well. Modal site UI. And I think it's a file down here, style.scss. I can right click. And if I'd like to, I can, of course, add this to the web compiler the same way as before. Awesome. But as you can see, we still have these min.css files. If you don't want them, you can simply delete them. After doing so, any future edits or recompiles shouldn't end up with you having those min.css files as we've disabled them in the settings here. It's a super simple file and it's nice and easy to use and set up. You don't need to add to this manually, you just need to right click, web compile, and then compile these to add them to the list, though you can of course do this manually. What file types are supported? Well, once again, less, SCSS, style, JSX, ES6, or coffee files. So it of course really does make life quite a bit easier, especially when you're working with these nice shorter file formats. That makes life just a whole bunch easier. But anyways, that's about it for this quick video. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Technobi here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.